You're listening to Clyde's Favorite Old Time Radio, a podcast of the various genres of old time radio, science fiction, comedy, mystery, horror, and historical broadcasts. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. with a brief reminder. Mystery Play Internet Radio is listener-supported, so I encourage your monetary support with a donation today. Please visit www.mpir-otr.com and click on the donations page. A one-time donation of any amount will be greatly appreciated. Again, that's www.mpir-otr.com. And thank you for listening to Mystery Play Internet Radio. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, The Lineup. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment we will take you by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. I can make it. Now maybe you better take my arm. Uh, thanks. It's my leg. Always gives me trouble. Rheumatism. And then when those two kids beat me up. Uh, we can sit right here. That's fine. I never could figure why they beat me up. I give them all the money there was in the newsstand. All of it may still beat me up. Mm-hmm. Sixteen dollars. Every cent in a chill. I don't know what kids are coming to these days. Guns robbing on the street. Hey, I have your attention, please. You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? No, no, what? They're coming. Uh, Mr. Garrow. Thank you. Oh, uh, sorry. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number of their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The questions I ask these suspects merely to get a natural tone of voice. You do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Okay, keep it moving. Right over here to the end of the stage. Now turn and face front, hands at your sides. Now when I call your number, step out and face the room. Talk up so the people can hear you. All right, number one, Charles Holmes, robbery. Where do you live, Charles? Well, I I moved there before yesterday over on the Nassau Road. What's the address? Uh, well, I can't remember. It's new. It's on Nassau Road. 654 South Nassau? Yeah, that sounds like it, yeah. Where'd you live before you moved over on Nassau? Oh, on Dixon. That's about five, six blocks away. What's the address, Joe? Oh, uh, 993. Or four, I think. 845 Dixon? Yeah, it's funny. I thought it was 900. How long did you live there? Well, it was a couple of months, I think. Isn't it more like a couple of weeks? Oh, yeah, I guess so. You move around a lot. Yeah, I guess I do. What do you do for a living, Charles? Well, uh... What's your business? Well, I ain't working right now. What were you doing when you were arrested? <laughs> I was picking a guy's pocket. 
That's a habit of yours, isn't it, Charles? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Step back. Okay. Number two, Irv Abkin, drunk and disorderly. Where do you live, Irv? Uh, 6323 Henry Lee Street. Rooming house, hotel, private house, what? Well, lady, she says it's a private house, but it don't seem so private to me. How many people live there besides you? Uh, who cares? Five, six, I don't know. What time did you get home last night, Irv? What's with all these questions? You got no what right... What time did you get home last night? Two, maybe three o'clock. I don't keep track of time when I'm relaxing. Must have been relaxing pretty hard last night. I had a few with the boys. Not many, just a few. The people in your house say you kept them awake for two hours with your noise. Did you? I didn't make no noise. I was singing only. Be- besides landlady, she stopped me. Your landlady says you used abusive language to her. What do you mean abusive language? Call her names. I call her a few names. That's not what she said. Okay, so I call her a lot of names. She got a lot of nerve. You should get a load of some of the ones her old man comes up with. Okay, step back. Number three, Phil Carter, suspected robbery. Where do you live, Phil? 6-2 Alameda Street. Are you people out there hear him? Not very well. People out there can't hear you, Phil. Now speak up nice and loud. Where do you live? 6-2 Alameda Street. That's better, Phil. Who do you live with? My old man. Your father? Yeah. How old are you, Phil? 19. Next month. What Lieutenant. kind of work did you do? Yeah. What did you do before you were out of work? My leg. That's him, Lieutenant. Uh-huh. Uh, Sergeant Cargan. Yes, Lieutenant. Number three, hold for interrogation. Comfortable, Phil? No more, I. You know why you're arrested, don't you? Should I know? Sergeant Cargo, tell Phil why he's here. There's a gang of kids, Phil, all about your age. They've been robbing grocery stores and newsstands for the past six months. What's that got to do with me? Last night, two boys held up a man named Garrow. You were one of those boys, Phil. That's a dirty lie. Don't get tough with me, son. It won't help you. Who was with you on the job, Phil? I don't know what you're talking about. You had a partner. What was his name? Look, why don't you pick on somebody else? You had a whole line of guys out there. Why you bring me in here? Because we know you robbed that newsstand. It makes you pretty smart. Now tell me how you know Mr. Garrow identified you. Said you were one of the two boys. He's crazy. How can an old man like that identify anybody? How'd you know he was old, Phil? Well, isn't he? How'd you know? He runs a newsstand, don't he? Who ever heard of a young guy running a newsstand? The report here says you were running down 5th Street toward Elm. Is that right, Phil? Were you running? Well, maybe I was. I don't remember. Why were you in such a hurry? It was late. Just going home. Where'd you say you lived, Phil? You ask him. He got it on the paper. I asked you. 862 Alameda. Mm-hmm. Officer who arrested you said you were running toward Elm. That's the opposite direction from Alameda. Well, what's that prove? It proves you weren't going home. Okay, so I wasn't going home. What were you doing on Fifth Street? I was at the movies. What movie house? Pimlico. What picture did you see? The Scar. Good picture? Hmm. It was all right. Tell us about it. Huh? Well, the story. Tell us what the picture was about. Look, what is this? I don't have Tell to... Tell us a story. Well, there was this guy. He went up to this dame's place and... And, uh... Go ahead, Phil. What happened then? Uh, I don't remember what happened. I, I, I guess I fell asleep. You must have been pretty tired. Well, sure, I was tired. I don't get no sleep at home. Freight trains all night. You'd be tired, too. Why don't you tell us the truth, Phil? What do you mean? I am telling you the truth. You didn't see any movie last night. Sure I did. I saw the scar. You don't even know what the picture's about. You know why, Phil? Because you didn't see it. Because you were too busy beating up Mr. Garrett. That's a lie. I was at the movies and I fell asleep. Who was your partner on the job? I didn't have any partner. I didn't do any job. How many times I got to tell you? All right, Phil. Yeah, Ben. Come in here, will you, Quine? Right. You gonna let me go now? I'm sending you back to your cell. Boy, you haven't got anything on me. Hi, Pete. Hi, Clint. Lock him up. All right. Come on. You can't keep me here. I haven't done anything. Come on, come on. Uh, how long will it take us to get over to Alameda Street? Oh, maybe 15 minutes. Something on your mind? Bill's father. Let's go. think this is it? No number in the house. Well, it must be the one. That was 8,600 back in the corner. 
Well, one thing Phil told the truth about. What's that? The noise those freight trains make. Good thing I don't live here. I'd never get to sleep. Yo, watch out for that loose board. Oh, I see. Yeah, the place looks shut up tight. Some dump. Try it. Open. Doesn't look like anybody... Oh, I beg your pardon. Didn't see you sitting there. Are you, Mr. Carter? We're from the police, Mr. Carter. Police? What do you want with me? Uh, just a few questions about your son, Phil. You want a drink? It's wine. No, thanks. We, uh... You don't want a drink, you don't have to. Mind if I have one? Uh, go right ahead. <clears throat> Found trouble? I'm afraid so, Mr. Carter. What's he done? Robbery. Held up a newsstand. In jail now? That's right. <sighs> I knew it. I tried to be a good father. He'll make fun of me. Now he's in trouble. We're hoping you'll be able to help us. You know there'll be trouble. We're sitting here waiting for it ever since Johnny brought that gun to the house. Johnny? Johnny who? Sure you want to have a drink? Good wine. Uh, who's Johnny, Mr. Carter? <sighs> Johnny Long, friend of Phil's. Phil and Johnny, they make fun of me. I was only trying to be a good father. You say Johnny brought a gun here. When was this? A couple of months ago. You get Johnny. Phil's in jail. Johnny belongs there, too. You get Johnny. Where can we find him? He works at the shipyard. You'll find him. And then you'll put him in jail, just like Phil. You'll put him in jail, won't you? Thanks for the information, Mr. Carter. Now you can have a drink, can't you? I've got to be moving along. Run down to the shipyard to see about Johnny. That's right. You've got to have a drink before you go. Well, we're in a hurry now. Some other time. Huh. Good thing. The bottle's empty. You get Johnny. Put him in jail, you hear? Put him in jail. <laughs> Kid. Lazy, though. He quit a while back. About a month ago, wasn't it? Uh, let me see. Yeah, just about a month ago. Have you seen him since then? Me? Uh-uh. Any idea where he lives? Didn't the front office have his address? We well, checked the one they gave us. Johnny moved out last month. Sound kind of anxious to find John. Mm, just some routine business. Yeah, I'm sorry I can't help you. No, that's okay. Thanks, anyhow. Hey, uh, wait a minute. I just remembered something. Yeah? About two weeks before Johnny quit, he was working overtime. He asked me to do a favor for him. He was a nice kid. He didn't mind doing things for him. And what kind of a favor? He wanted me to call his girl. Tell her he'd be late. You called her? Yeah. Over at the Mohawk Beauty Shop. She works there. Remember her name? Well, let me think. Kind of an unusual name. It was Vera or something. No, no, it was Verna. That was it, Verna. Any last name? Uh, just Verna. I don't know if it's worth anything to you. We'll check it. Thanks again. for a girl who works here. Her name's Verna. Oh, I'm Verna. Verna Winton. Well, this is Sergeant Cargo, Miss Winton. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie, police. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? We'd like some information. Maybe you can help us. Well, I'll be glad to if I can. Oh, dear, I, I forgot all about Mrs. Cobb. She's been under the dryer much too long. Excuse me, that's me. Surely. Oh, pretty girl. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. You were saying you wanted some information. I would like to ask you about Johnny Long. Johnny Long? You do know him, don't you, Miss Winton? Oh, yes, I, I know him very well. You see him often? Well, not as often as I'd like to. Only about three times a week. But that'll all be changed after we get married. You and Johnny are going to get married? Yes, yeah, huh? Johnny works in the shipyard. He told me we'd get married as soon as he got a raise. And the other night, he said he'd get it in a couple of weeks. Did you know Johnny quit his job at the shipyard? Johnny quit his job? Mm-hmm, about a month ago. I don't understand. Why did he tell me this? Well, we've been after a gang of boys for a long time, most of them about Johnny's age. They've been holding up newsstands in grocery stores. A gang? Mm -hmm. Last night, two boys robbed a newsstand, and we caught one of them. We're pretty sure Johnny was the other one. Oh, no. No, you couldn't be right. Was Johnny with you last night, Miss Winton? No. No, he wasn't with me. But he didn't rob anybody. I don't believe it. Miss Winton, Johnny carries a gun. Sooner or later, he's going to hurt somebody. We want to get him before he does, and we'll need your help. 
Now, tell us where he lives, where we'll be able to find him. I don't know where he lives. You're engaged to him? You don't know where he lives? Johnny never told me. I, I didn't think it was important for me to know. Uh, how about photographs? You have any of Johnny? Just a small one. I keep it in my bag. Mind getting it? No, it's right here. Here you are. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks. Uh, Lieutenant, are you sure that it's this Johnny Long you're after? It's a very common name. And... We're sure, Miss Winton. I see. Well, what else do you want me to do? Give Sergeant Cargill your home address. We'll be in touch with you. I can't believe it. Not Johnny. He's going to marry me. You can't put him in jail. I'm sorry. Sorry? How can you say you're sorry? You'll shut Johnny up in jail, maybe for years. You don't know what it would mean. I know what it means, Miss Winton. That's why I'm sorry. Friends, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley Spearmint gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley Spearmint gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying outdoor sports and other activities. Wrigley Spearmint gum tastes good anytime, and the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now, back to the lineup. Maybe. Yeah. I think I'll have a lamb. Georgina. Yeah. How's the lamb? Roasted and good. Bent jelly. Boy, I'm tired. I'm not going to eat too much. I get a logie. Yeah. I still think I'll have the spare ribs. Hey, Georgina. Lamb? Yeah, for me and some coffee. Yeah, give me the spare ribs. Lamb and spare ribs. And coffee. Right. I got small watching Verna check in when she left the beauty shop. She went right home. I hope Johnny contacts her. Get this thing wrapped up so we can get some sleep. You know, we've worked a few hours this week. Everybody does with the vacations. When's yours do? September, I think. Thought I might do some fishing. Mm, maybe I can work it so I get mine. Hey, then. that'd be great. A couple of weeks sitting in the old... Yeah. Oh, no. What? Oh, no. I always catch you guys at dinner. Georgina. Hi, Why don't you go That's away? That's something important, then. Yeah, it always is. I hate to see you go hungry, but Hankel's delicatessen was just held up. Hankel's? Yeah, on Walnut. One kid. Johnny Long? The description fits. Stuck up the place and got away with a lousy 30 bucks. Not much of a haul. No, but he killed Hankel to get it. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie, Mrs. Hankel. I'm sorry about your husband. Yes. Is someone coming over to stay with you? My sister. They said Nancy so would be here. Well, fine. I uh, know you don't feel like talking now, but it's important that I ask you a few questions. Yes, sir. Really? It's dead. The boy who shot your husband, uh, did you get a good look at him? No, I really said we would close up the shop and go to the beach. It's just good to go places with, really. And Mrs. Hankel, would you recognize the boy who was in here? I would recognize him. I've got a snapshot here. Would you mind taking a look at it, please? He didn't mean to shoot, really. He thought really tried to stop him. He really didn't try to stop him. I know. The boy in the picture. Is he the one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one. He shot, really. Why did he have to do that? He really didn't try to stop him. Yeah. Excuse me, Mrs. Hankel. What is it? Headquarters call. Our stakeout just spotted Johnny Long going into his girl's apartment. Maybe she won't answer me. 
Sure, sure. answer. Could be Johnny won't let her. Try again. Oh, gee. We want Johnny, Miss Wynn. Yes, I, I thought you'd know. I wish you'd given us a little time together. Where is he? He acts so strange. Won't say anything. Just stares. Lieutenant, has Johnny... I mean, like you said, has he... Where is he? In the back room. Come on, Pete. Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Johnny? I, I didn't mean to shoot him. I, I, I didn't mean to shoot him. I'm, You'll have to come along with us. I, I was going to turn myself, and I, I just wanted a few minutes with my girl. Then let us have your gun, Johnny. You, you don't believe I was going to turn myself in. Your gun, Johnny. Where is it? it it's in my pocket. Here, I'll, I'll get, get it. it. I was going to turn it over to you. I don't see that gun anymore. Should have thought of that sooner. It's the old man. He's still alive. He's dead. I, I, I didn't mean to shoot him. You've you got to believe. I, I, I didn't mean to shoot him, Arnold. you better come along now. Oh, what's going to happen to me? That'll be up to the jury. I'm scared. I could never think I'd get into all this trouble. I, I, I don't know what to do. Let's go. Well, will it help if, if I tell everything I know of, of, about the gang and everything? It'll help. You can tell us on the headquarters. I'd, I'd like to talk here. That girl's place is... Make it easier to talk. I, I'll, I'll tell you everything. Everything I know. All right. This gang, how long have you been with it? Maybe two months. I, I don't remember exactly. You know the names of any of the other boys? A few. Well, not many, but I, I, I know a few. You don't get them from you later. Who runs the gang? Some man. I, I don't know his name. Ever see him? No. N nobody sees him but Al. Al? Gumpus, his last name. Al Gumpus. He's the one that we make the payoff to. What makes you think he's not the chief? I, I heard him talking on the phone to some man. He gets the names of places to stick up from this man, and he gives us orders. Where can we find out? Uh, there's a Penny Arcade on River Street, near South. Alpha. Penny Arcade on River, near South. Mm -hmm. Okay, Johnny, that'll do for now. Are you, you going to take me away? That's right, down to headquarters. All right. I'd like to say goodbye to my girl. You... You'll have to say goodbye to Verna, won't you? Sure. All right, Jeff. Be with you in a minute. As soon as I finish this game. <laughs> I've made it. <laughs> what can I do for you, gents? Uh, we're looking for Alf Gumpert. Uh, you found him, gents. Somebody said old Alf had the finest penny shows in town. <laughs> it's the truth, gents. Finest I pulled for a penny in the whole town. Let me get your piss full of change. Well, we're from the police. The police? Well, what's the matter? My license is okay. It says I can stay open until midnight. What's it say about robbing newsstands? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I never robbed no newsstand. No, you didn't have the guts. So you got a bunch of kids to do it for you. What are you trying to frame me with? Here, name me one kid I ever got to rob a newsstand. I'll do better. I'll name you two. Bill Carter and Johnny Long. Johnny Long? Boy, that dirty... Grab him. I got him. Let me go. Let me go. One minute. You all right? Yeah. Okay, you get up. <laughs> Broke my arm. Get up. <laughs> you cops think you Shut can... Shut up. That's all right, Chief. Let him talk. I got nothing to say. Who gives you your orders? I got nothing to say. You better tell us, Alf. Who's the big boy? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know no big boy. Why don't you leave me alone? As soon as you tell us. Look, you fellas got it all wrong. You're the one who's got it wrong, Alf. And it's going to cost you ten years. Huh? Long time. You want to do it alone? I ain't going to do nothing. Who gives you the orders? Nobody. Come on, Alf. Nobody. Okay, let's get him done. You can't hold me in like this. I'll be out in an hour. Who's going to go bail? I'll be out. Who's behind you, Alf? We want him. You know, you're in a hole. Johnny Long killed a man tonight. We can get you for withholding evidence, accessory, complicity. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who is it? You take it easy? That's right. His name's Jeffries. He hasn't been around for a long time. 
Stan Jeffries. Yeah, I know him. Con man. Yeah, you got a package on him. He's been working in another state. This is small time for Jeffries. Not so small. We've been doing all right. Where can we find him? I don't know. Al. I don't. I I don't. He'll be in my office tonight after the arcade's closed. What time? Half to two. Mm, it's 11.30 now. Close up the arcade, Al. We'll go back to your office and wait for him. Oh, you, you, won't, you won't get him. Stan can smell cops a mile away. We'll take that chance, Al. Come on. That's ten past two, Ben. Stan Jeffries should have been here by now. I told you Stan wouldn't be here. He can smell cops. Stan, have I not show up for a date with you? He's usually on the nose. Do you have any other phones in the place besides this one on the desk? Yeah, there's a pay phone out in the arcade. See? Mm-hmm. Get on that phone. Leave the door open. If you hear the phone ring in here, have the call face. Okay. That sweatin's making me nervous. Well, I'll tell you what you can do. Write me the names of the other kids who work for you and Stan. I wrote you 23 names. How many do you want? All of them. That's all of them. I bet you could remember some more if you find. That's all of them. How many times do I have to tell you? I got it. Now, wait a minute. You ready, Pete? Yeah. Answer it. Hello? Yes, Stan? Yeah, I'm alone. Where you been? I've been waiting for you. Well, yes, yeah, Stan, yeah. Yeah, okay, Stan. So long. Well, you did all right. What did he say? He said he didn't come here because two of the kids were picked up. He said he, he's afraid the heat's on. What else? He's at the Legion Cafeteria on First Street. Wants me to meet him there right away. Are you sure that's what he said? I don't think I'd lie to you. Not now. Yeah, yeah. Grace has been. Where'd he come from? Legion Cafeteria. All right, let's go. <laughs> through the window. Mm-hmm. Only three people in the whole place? Mm-hmm. I'm at the corner table. Man with his back to us. Yeah. A little grayer than the last time I saw him. A little heavier. You go get him now? Uh-huh. Stay by the door. Watch it, Ben. He sees you. Stay where you are, Stan. Get those people back in the kitchen. All right, everybody, just stay in the kitchen. You two gentlemen, you better get in the kitchen, too. Sorry, I'll just be for a few minutes. Want the ambulance, Ben? Yeah. No hurry, though. Kid? Yeah. Now, come on, let's clean this up and get some sleep. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by Charles E. Israel and edited by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Herb Butterfield, Howard McNear, Hal Marks, Tony Barrett, High Everback, Sammy Hill, Virginia Gregg, and Bob Sweeney. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>